Chapter 6 with Brianna, Jackie, and Katie. Free choice concept. Properties of a parallelogram with Katie. Wait, what happened? That's better. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So in parallelogram A, B, C, D, side B, C is congruent to A, D, and B, A is congruent to C, D. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So in parallelogram A, B, C, D, angles B and D are congruent, and angles A and C are congruent. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So in parallelogram A, B, C, D, X and Y add up to 180 because they are consecutive angles in a parallelogram. So if a parallelogram has one right angle, then it has four right angles. So in parallelogram A, B, C, D, if B is a right angle, then C, D, and A are also a right angle. Wow, I'm feeling a bit green. So, diagonals of a parallelogram. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. So, in parallelogram A, B, C, D, A, P is congruent to P, C, and BP is congruent to PD because their, because their diagonals are bisect each other. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then each diagonal separates the parallelogram into a congruent triangle. So, in parallelogram ABCD, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. Let's try it out. So, if um, ABCD is a parallelogram, Let's see if we can find these problems. If to find AD, we know that BC is eight, so AD would also be eight because the opposite sides are congruent. Let's find measure ADC. So to find measure ABC, we find 65 plus 45 is 110. And since opposite angles are congruent, ABC and ADC are the same. So angle ADC is 110. Let's find EC. So AE would equal 5, so EC equals 5, because diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. We chose the properties of parallelogram because it recognizes the properties a quadrilateral requires to be a parallelogram, which is very important in later sections in the chapter. The most important topic we chose was 6.1 sum of interior and exterior angle sum. Why is it important, you may ask? We believe the concept of finding the interior and exterior angle sum is the most important because in future chapters, you will need to figure out the measurements of certain angles in polygons, and having the sum of the angle measurements are very important in this process. You will need to know theorem 6.1, Polygon interior angle sum. The equation to find the sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. Here's an example. First, you find the polygon. This is a pentagon, so it has five sides. In order to find the sum of the interior angles, you have to plug in 5, replacing n, which is the number of sides, and subtracted by 2, which has a total of 3, and you multiply it by 180, which gives you a total of 540 as the sum of the interior angles. Now let's move on to theorem 6.2, polygon exterior angle sum. This states that the sum of the exterior angle measures of a convex polygon, one angle at each vertex, is 360. In this photo, measurement 1 plus measurement 2 plus measurement 3, measurement 4, measurement 5, and measurement 6 all equal to 360. Here's an example. Measurement 1, 2x minus 5. Measurement 2, 5x. Measurement 3, 2x. Measurement 4, 6x minus 5. And measurement 5, 3x plus 10 all equals to 360. 
Then you get 2x plus 5x plus 2x plus 6x plus 3x plus negative 5 plus negative 5 plus 10, which equals to 360. Then you get 18x equals 360 and x equals 20. You can find the measurement of each angle by plugging in x. Then you're done. This is why the concept of finding the interior and exterior sum angle is the most important. The most difficult concept of chapter 6 is proving a parallelogram is a square. The square is both a rhombus and a rectangle. To prove a parallelogram is a square, it needs to have the properties of a rectangle and the properties of a rhombus. The properties of a rhombus are the diagonals are perpendicular, they make congruent triangles, and they bisect a pair of opposite angles. These are the properties of a rectangle. A rectangle has congruent diagonals, diagonals that bisect each other, and four right angles. Let's do an example. If we are given that QRST is a parallelogram, and TR is Q congruent to QS, and the measure of angle QPR is 90, then we should have a figure like this. Now we need to prove that QRST is a square. Let's do a two column proof. First we write in the given. Now that we know that the diagonals are congruent, we can state that the figure is a rectangle. We know that angle QPR is a 90 degree angle, so we can say that line QS and TR are perpendicular. This is because of the definition of perpendicular lines. Since the lines are perpendicular, we can say that the figure is also a rhombus. Now that we know that the figure is both a rhombus and a rectangle, it is safe to say that it is a square. Bye now. This is the most difficult concept of chapter six because you have to know the different properties of a rhombus and a rectangle.